Hey, I'm Kevin Aknez, and today I want to share one of the concepts that I've been working on lately. So I've been seeking this authentic sound whenever I play, and this practice idea came from me feeling like I was repeating myself a lot, especially when improvising, but not necessarily wanting to oversaturate my vocabulary as that authentic sound, at least to me when I'm learning something new, it doesn't really appear until literally years after learning the lick. And so this concept is taking the general movement of a line and then developing it. We'll move it diatonically and harmonically, as well as checking out how to anchor the visualization part with the help of the pentatonic scale. So the lick that we're gonna be developing today is stolen from Guthrie Govan. He played this lick in his Albert King style improvisation over at Jam Track Central. It's a B blues and it happens over the four dominant chord during the turnaround. The lick starts on beat two and it goes something like this. And so the pentatonic shape that we're gonna be in is this one. B minor pentatonic. And so we'll start off with a kind of blues cliche where we'll bend a full step up to the following notes. We'll bend up to the fifth, play the fourth, do a trill down and pull off to the minor third. And this is where our descending arpeggio starts. So this is over E7 again. So we'll start on the flat seven. We go down to the fifth on the B string on the 12th fret. We play the major third on the G string, which is the 13th fret. We go down to the root on the 9th fret of the G string. And then we go back up to the 5th on the B string. And the way that I like to do that is I like to hybrid pick it with my middle finger. Back to the root and slide down to the flat 7 on the G string. And so already, this... The first three notes of this arpeggio almost sounds diminished to me. It, it kind of gives this vibe. Um, so we can easily manipulate this lick into doing that thing. And it already sounds very evil and has that diminished sound to it. So that's one way that we can manipulate it. The, what happened here is instead of going to the root note, we go to the next diminished uh, note. And we can also do this in like a multitude of different modes. So let's do Dorian. Um, let's start with the pentatonic shape that all the guitar players know the best. And the way that we turn this into Dorian is we just add the 9 and the major 6. So the scale. And to stay within this shape, we'll start on the major second, bend up to the next note, which is the minor third. Go down to the second, uh, do a trill and pull off to the root. And this is where our arpeggio starts. And so since it's an arpeggio, we can kind of choose whatever we want to do. So if we want to start with a root, go down to the major six, Go down to the 11, go down to the minor third, go back up to the major six, do a slide from the minor third to the major second. We can also manipulate the arpeggio, do something different, similar to what we did with the diminished. So let's get more of a B minor seven sound. So we can do this arpeggio here, that would be the root, flat seven, the 11, the minor third, go back up to the flat seven, slide from minor third to major second. And it already sounds more modern. And so we can move this, uh, we, let's move it down. This pentatonic shape will be our anchor. So we'll bend up to the next note, which would be the bend up to the major second. Do the trill and then on the, on the root and pull off to the flat seven. And this is where our arpeggio starts. So since we were starting on the flat seven, we're taking everything down one step in Dorian. So since the B string note was the flat uh, seven, the next B string note will be the major six. And then 
we'll, we'll keep going with this. So the 11th was the first note on the G string. So the first note on the G string will now be the minor third. And then we go down to the uh, major second. And then we'll do, we'll play the, we'll go back up to the major six again. Do the slide from uh, major second to the root. And then when we go down diatonically, we're going to bump into some areas that are kind of in between two pentatonic uh, scales. So that would be this mixed with this one. And where we were, so you could kind of see it as this. And then we'll do this. Uh, we'll bend up to the to the root note this time. And then we'll do the trill on the flat seven and then pull off to the major sixth. And then since we started on the major sixth on the B string last time, we'll do the fifth and so forth. So two down to one, back up to fifth, slide from the root note to the flat seven. And we can also move it upwards. Uh, this would obviously be very, very hard further down in B. So we started here. We can start go up here. So we could bend up to the eleventh from the minor third. Do a trill on the minor third and pull off to the second. And then keep going with that same arpeggio. So since we initially started with the flat seven, we'll now start with the root. Go down to the fifth. Go down to the 11, up to the uh, root again, slide from the 11 to the minor third. You can keep going up. Um, this was also kind of a, no, this was the same area that we started with, so we can do that. We can keep going up, so now we're in this shape. Now we're, oh, we have one more. So this is. Uh, just going through it really, real, real fast, otherwise we'll be here forever. So this, to me. is very Dorian because we're kind of bending up to the major six. So we can easily take, take this to Aeolian. We'll just flatten all the major sixes to uh, flat sixes. We'll st we're still in the same pentatonic shape. And then we can also manipulate it to um, harmonic minor. So at that point, instead of the flat seven, we'll go to major seven. Obviously, we could do melodic minor, so we'll go back to the major six and we'll keep the major seven. So you could see how many different ways that we can keep going with this concept. And my theory for why it's easier to keep things more authentic this way is because the muscle memory of your right hand already knows how to play that lick. You just have to map it and navigate with the fretboard visualization part and your left hand and just get used to just different motions and just different notes and slightly different fingerings with your left hand. And from there on, I think it's easier to know how to incorporate it because you also know exactly where to place it inside of a phrase, etc. because you already know this lick. So I hope you enjoy this, this concept. Let me know if you enjoy these kind of lessons. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the flip side.